Adam's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Bud Steffen, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Ladies, every homemaker knows that few things repay good care like fine wood. The floors of a home are built to last many years. But with proper care, they do more than last. They grow more and more beautiful, gain a richer, deeper luster with every year that passes, with proper care. And for more than three generations, the vast majority of fine homemakers have known that proper care for fine floors means regular waxing with Johnson's Paste Wax. Today, Johnson's Paste Wax far outsells any other brand of paste wax. And that's been true for many years. That means that millions of experienced homemakers agree with us when we say no other wax brings such lustrous beauty to wood floors in exactly the same way. So protect and beautify your floors. Make them easier to clean with Johnson's Paste Wax. Ask for it at your grocery, hardware, or department store, or any other home supply dealer. One of the hardships of having a fixed place of business and regular office hours is that when your unemployed friends choose to drop in unexpectedly, you're cornered like a rat. <laughs> Unless you have a hard-eyed receptionist with a baseball bat under her desk. And Mr. Wallace Wimple doesn't. But let's hear about it in Mr. McGee's own mangled English as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> So I thought I'd drop in casual on Wally Wimple and give him the old house trick. So what does I do but being a guy that likes to make fast decisions and because it was raining and I was right in front of his office, I thought he might give me a lift home even though it is a little out of his way, but not much, so I did it. You did what? I dropped in to see Wally Wimple like I was saying. Oh. Yeah, at the Have You Written to Your Mother Today greeting card and calendar company. Oh. Uh -huh. Wally works there. Oh. Uh -huh. Writes cards. There he was, sitting at his desk, up to his clavicle in Christmas greetings. He just wrote a cute one, too. Oh, what was it? Well, it was a picture of Santa Claus pointing at a big map. And the verse says, Michigan is a peninsula, Panama is an isthmus, we haven't heard what shape you're in, but we wish you Merry Christmas. <laughs> How would you like a fish dinner, kiddo? <laughs> the same to you and a happy new year, and what's a fish dinner got to do with it? Oh, my gosh, I forgot to tell you. That's the whole point of what I started out to say. Dearie, you lose more points than a bird dog with a head cold. <laughs> what is the point? Well, Wally Wimple asked me how did I like fish, and I says I love fish, and he says he's got more than he knows what to do with, so he's bringing a dozen or so nice ones over later this afternoon to our house. Isn't that nice? Boy, am I puckered up for them golden brown pan-fried trouts. They're the best trouts when you get... Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, Dr. Gamble, come in, doctor. Thank you, my dear. And how are you today, bare tan boy with a foot of cheek? <laughs> You'll be sorry to hear that I'm in splendid health. So get that five-buck-a-visit look out of your eye. Mal. Mal? Practice. Oh. Keeping you busy, are they, doctor? Oh, yes. Same old routine. I was up at 3.30 a.m. this morning ushering in a new little citizen. Oh. The ninth one to the same family. If the stork would quit blundering around in the dark and make some deliveries in the daytime, maybe families would balance up a little better. <laughs> Listen to the usher complaining about the stage manager. <laughs> Hey, you like a fish dinner, Fatso? You do, don't you, Doctor? Well, it depends. Drop, Why? Drop around about seven bells and you'll see, Doctor. Wally Wimple is bringing us a mess of fish. Molly set a place for Dockey here with a spoon, a fork, and a scalpel. <laughs> well, you're certainly invited, Doctor. We'll be expecting you. My dear, in my profession, we become all too aware of life's hazards. Too true. Yes. I only... <laughs> 
I only pray that I may be permitted to live until 8 p.m. <laughs> You'll be here on time or I'll kill you myself, Tops now. <laughs> Don't you worry, Blunderpuss. If I miss this, I'll leap off a pile of your unpaid doctor bills and break my neck. <laughs> See you at seven, Molly, and thank you. <laughs> He's sweet, though. Yeah, sweet as sugar, kiddo, and a lot lumpier. <laughs> well, I'd better go get things started, dearie. I may need some things from the store. Ask the rest of our friends to dinner if you want to. I don't mind. Okay. Okay, Tootsie. Ah, there goes a good kid. If I told her a friend of mine just give me a 90-foot whale and I was inviting 200 guests for dinner, she'd never bat an eye. She'd just scream and jump out the window. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. Come in. Oh, hi there, Teeny. <laughs> how's everything? Gee, I don't know, mister. You don't? No. I just know how some things are. Oh? I'm not smart enough to know how everything is. <laughs> oh, <see. laughs> well, that was just a categorical expression anyway, sis. How's school? Oh, gee, just well, mister. Yeah? We got a dandy teacher in the third grade this year, I betcha. You. you have, eh? She's the... Hmm? I says you have, eh? Have what? Got a dandy teacher. Where? In the third grade. When? This year. I know it. <laughs> Miss Frippy. Miss Frippy. <laughs> Miss Frippy. <laughs> she just loves little children. Mm -hmm. And gee, she makes everything so interesting. You know how to spell Missouri. Missouri, why, well, I guess. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, Missouri. <laughs> no, sis, I'm sorry, but that's wrong. That's... It is not, I betcha. That's the way our teacher said this, Bella. That's Mississippi. No, it's Miss Frippy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you weren't spelling Missouri. What was I spelling? Mississippi. That's my teacher. Only it isn't Mississippi. It's Miss Frippy. M I double S F R I double P. Why? Why what? <laughs> Just why? F R I P P I, Frippy. Isn't that her name? Whose name? Your teacher. No. Huh? Our teacher is Mrs. Tanner. Oh? Miss Frippy's just a substitute while Mrs. Tanner's homesick with a flu. Oh. oh, but I guess there's no use explaining things to you, mister. You just don't understand. Hmm. I don't understand. And to think I asked her how was everything. I'm glad she didn't try to tell me. Billy Mills to the orchestra and fiddle dee dee.
just phoned McGee. He's coming for dinner, too. What are you doing with the pencil and paper? Oh, I'm planning the menu for tonight, Tootsie. How many K's are there in broccoli? Now, uh... <laughs> Look, dearie, don't you worry about the menu. I'll do the cooking. Yeah? I have a wonderful recipe for fish that my mother wrote out for me when we were married. Yeah? How's it go? Well, you take some fish... Yeah? ...and fry them. Oh. It's one of the finest recipes... Oh. <laughs> That might be milk spilt from Kramer's drugstore. I ordered some horse duvers and come in. Oh, hello, Milton. Come on in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. I brought your stuff, Mr. McGee. Well, thanks, Milk. Put it on the table there. I, um, I brought something else, too, Mrs. McGee. My girl. Your girl? Yes, ma'am. Daphne. She's outside. Would you like to look at her? (laughs) Why, sure, Milk. Bring her in. By all means. Come on in, Daph. It's okay. <laughs> Isn't she cute, McGee? <laughs> uh, Mrs. McGee, this is my girl, Daphne. Daph, this is Mrs. McGee. Uh, Mr. McGee, this is my girl, Daphne. Daphne, this is Mr. McGee. Uh, Milton, this is your girl... <laughs> I, I guess that's everybody, isn't it? Well, hello, Daphne, dear. Nice to see you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sit down, sis. You and Milt go steady, do you? We do now, Mr. McGee, but Daph had plenty of dates till I come into her life. Oh, you took over, did you? Sure, I'm aggressive. When I went over for my first date, though, there were about 25 fellas all milling around her front porch. Gee, you must be pretty popular, sis. All boyfriends, were they? No, sir, they were firemen. Oh. Her house was on fire. (laughs) Wasn't it, Daphne? She seems to have a cheerful disposition, Milt. (laughs) What are you going to do when you grow up, sis? Drive a good humor truck? (laughs) Probably (laughs) be. Well, we better get going, I guess. I go to school this afternoon. I'm studying pharmacy this year, you know. Well, good for you, Milton. Yeah, pharmacy, eh? Well, that's swell, boy. Farmers are the backbone of this country. (laughs) Pharmacy is one of the most... No, no, McGee. Huh? Milton means he's studying to be a druggist. Oh. Well, you come back and see us again, Daphne, any time, dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring her back, Milk. She's a nice kid, but uh, don't she ever talk? Oh, sure. She talks a lot, Mr. McGee. Yeah. Talk for the folks, Daphne. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they cute youngsters, McGee? Yeah, if you like youngsters. <laughs> Personally, I gotta check over these horse duvers and see if everything's okay. Grand, I tell you, grand. <laughs> I hope everything's here. Now let me see. Licorice sticks, lemon drops, candy cane. What? Two kinds of jawbreakers, bubble gum, cigars. Heavenly day, since when are cigars classes hors d'oeuvres? Huh? As a matter of fact, since when are those cigars classes cigars? <laughs> I never saw anything. Hello, Molly. Hiya, pal. Hey, you're not here for dinner already, Will Well, I hope not. We don't expect Mr. Wimple with the fish until about 5.30. No, no, no. I'll come back later, Molly. I just stopped in to tell you how much I'm looking forward to it. Oh? Uh-huh. I haven't had a good fish dinner since my vacation this summer. Yeah, where'd you go on vacation, Junior? Down to Lake Taney Como, pal. Oh, that's right near Naked Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the great fishing spot. Did you do any good? Catch anything? I had one sensational day. Yeah? I was down on the dock, and I happened to look over the side, and here was this marlin in the water, you a see. A marlin? My gosh, how big was it? Oh, around 200 pounds. Ooh. Well, I grabbed a line. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Wilcox. Isn't a marlin some sort of an ocean fish? A swordfish? No, well, not this one, Molly. This was Horace Greeley marlin, the big department store man. Oh. <laughs> fell off the dock, and I threw him a line and hauled him ashore. I took him up to my cottage, oh, and when, I, when, I, when he got a look at the beautiful Johnson wax gleam oh, on the woodwork and paneling of my living room, mm-hmm. when he saw the warm glow of hospitality it gave my home, mm-hmm. he wanted to know all about it. Oh, dear. I explained to him how Johnson's paste wax puts mm-hmm. a tough, hard, protective coating on yes. floors and furniture and woodwork. Guards them against Mars and scratches. Yeah, that I showed him how easily dirt and dust wipes off. What a beautiful luster your yeah. furniture takes on when you keep it protected with Johnson's Paste Wax. And how... Hey, you... hey, hey, oh, look. It does. Waxy. <laughs> yes, pal. Waxy, you're a sort of a traveling salesman, aren't you? Oh, I certainly am, pal. Why? Well, start traveling, will you? <laughs> okay, kids, see you soon. Oh. Thank you.
Oh, now, let me see. Hey, you know where the scissors are, Molly? I want to cut out a few paper dolls. Paper dolls? What on earth for? I read an article on entertaining, and it said a nice touch is paper dollies under each plate. <laughs> I'll cut out some paper dollies and stick oh, them under Oh, no, each... McGee. Those are paper dollies. And huh? besides, we don't. Hold it, dearie. Come in. Okay. Oh, it's Mayor Latrivia, McGee. Do come in, Your Honor. Thank you, Molly. Hello, McGee. You're just the guy we've been waiting for, Latrivia. Hey, you doing anything tonight? Yes, I am, McGee. Oh. I have a dinner date with the governor. Oh, that's too bad, Mr. Mayor. We're having a little dinner party, and Mr. Wimple is bringing us some fish, and I thought I'd bake an apple pie. And Wonderful. We... I can eat with the governor any time. <laughs> Swell, the trip, seven o'clock Nothing fancy, boy Just place cards, horse duvers And three bottles of Napoleon root beer I've been saying I'll be here Have you been awfully busy uh, since your vacation, Mr. Mayor? Uh, terribly busy, Molly My desk is loaded with work And if I do say it myself I've really been hitting the ball this week I thought you said you had a lot of work to do <laughs> I have, and every bit of it urgent well, aren't you ashamed of yourself leaving all that work to go out and bat a ball around all day? <laughs> My gosh, if you had the taxpayer's interest at heart, Latrive, you'd stick to your work instead of scatting around a baseball diamond all day. Uh, there seems to be a slight misinterpretation here. You see, when well, I said... himself here I... used to play ball in Peoria, you know, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, I used to hit around 125 in the 3 I league. I mind one time with the score tied, two out and the bases loaded, I hit a long single to center field off my thumb. Of course, with a man already on every base, there wasn't any place for me to go, so I went back to the dugout and sat down. <laughs> uh, I wish I'd have wrote down some of the stuff that Pants Rowland, the manager, said to me, because that was the fanciest language I ever heard in the uh, three yeah. islands. <laughs> McGee, mm -hmm. when I said I'd been hitting the ball all day, I did not mean I'd been to the ballpark. I haven't left my desk all day. You don't mean you sit and bat a baseball around that beautiful office. <laughs> no, no, I no, didn't that's mean... that's a politician I... for you, Molly. Playing baseball in his office. What does he care about the taxpayer's money? Hishka bibble, he should worry. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, breaking up that beautiful office. Yeah. I am not offing up my beautiful breakfast. Huh? Breaking up my awful beautiful. Huh? it. Hello. Oh, now, 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 just... now, now, Mr. Mayor, don't shout. No, don't start yelling at us, Latrivia. We can take, take back your invitation for dinner, you know. <laughs> Trapped. <laughs> Look, may I just please clear this up right now? Please do. And make it good. Very well. Now, when I said I'd been hitting the ball this week, I was not referring to a baseball in any way. No baseball. Is that clear? Well, of course it is now, Mr. Mayor. McGee, he hasn't been playing baseball. Uh, Certainly not. He's been playing golf, hitting the golf ball around yeah. that beautiful ball. No! I haven't weighed golf all Greek. Huh? You ain't golf all Greek. Sweet. When I said I've been spinning the hole, hitting them all, quitting this ball, just... look, I didn't say anything about playing play small, playing late small, playing play small, playing small. Play you are the one that I was taking my bobbers, 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 bobbers. I did, you were the, I was, I Yes, boy? I believe you're interested in firearms, aren't you? Oh, guns simply fascinate him, Mr. Mayor. Splendid. I have an old Civil War musket I'd like you to shoot sometime, McGee. What's her name? Well, I... <laughs> oh, I'd love to do it. Civil War musket, eh? Is it safe to shoot it? That's what I'd like to find out. <laughs> See you at seven, Molly. <laughs> The King's Men tell you the story of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Who's that coming down the street? Chasing his nose and flapping his feet. Lanky as a bean pole. What a man. Who is it, brother? Why, that's none other than Ichabod. Hot old boy, Ichabod, that hobbly hoy. Who's his own best pride and joy? Ichabod, Ichabod, pray. That Ichabod? All dressed up. Got his bib and tucker on and all pressed up. There he goes a-strolling in his patched-up pants and his ragged tail. You'd think he was the Prince of Wales. Ichabod, how do you do? Who's that lady walking with 
do. Oh, pardon me, I thought you knew Katrina. Katrina? Katrina. Oh. Once you have met that little coquette, Katrina, Ooh. you won't forget Katrina. Katrina! Nobody yet has ever upset Katrina. You can embrace somebody like Grace or Lena And thrill with Wilhelmina But Katrina will smile and wink And just when you're on the brink You'll find it's not you she's thinking of And yet when you meet that pretty petite Katrina that she's in love with it. Come on, that lady's man gets around like nobody can. Has to be none other than Ichabod, 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 Ichabod Crane. Sal, it's after 7 o'clock. When is Wimple going to show up with those fish? If he lets us down after the way I've looked forward to this, I'll fracture every osteo in his corpus. No. <laughs> Take it easy, boys. I've got everything ready, so the minute Mr. Wimple gets here, I can pop the fish right in the Yeah, seat. all she has to do is pop... Oh, oh, no. No. Oh, oh, come in. Come in, come in, come in, Wally, old man, and... Oh, hi, Ollie. Oh, it's Ollie the janitor from the Elks Club, boys. Come on in, Ollie. Well, thank you, Mrs. Hello, McGee. Well, hello, Doctor, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Ollie. You know the rest of the folks, I think. I hope I ain't buttoned in, McGee. I was just going past, and I drop in to give you a message. Whom from, Ollie? Uh, from the chairman of the pool table committee at the Elks Club, McGee. Now, you tell him I'll pay for mending the cloth on that billiard table the day he can prove it was me that tore it. Tell him that. Yeah, I will. At meantime, McGee, he says to tell you you left your wristwatch on the chair. Here it is. Huh? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I did it that. Oh, thanks, Ollie. And Ollie. Yeah? Forget what I said about tearing the pool table cover. <laughs> Maybe it hasn't even been noticed yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. How's your family, Ollie? Oh, you's fine, thank you, missus. My missus is expecting. Oh? Me home, pretty quick. Uh, oh. <laughs> Because we're having some friends in for smorgasbord. What does smorgasbord mean, Ollie? Well, smorgasbord, Doctor, is Scandinavian word. In Norwegian, it means once more around the table and it serves you right. <laughs> and in Swedish, it means nobody's looking to call you want. <laughs> Well, it's 7.15, McGee. Maybe you better call up Wally and see what's delaying him. Yeah, maybe I ought at that. I'll call him right now. Who's got a nickel? Here, McGee. Thanks, Doc. I'll ask Wimp. But... McGee? Huh? What's the nickel for? I'm going to call Wimp on the telephone. It's after 7, and he Give ought to be... Give that nickel back to the doctor. <laughs> Give the nickel... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what I done, Doc. I was thinking we had a pay telephone. <laughs> My gosh, I must be getting absent-minded. Give me the nickel. Here you are. <laughs> you mean you don't have a pay telephone? Oh, Why, pal, you've been borrowing nickels from me in here for 15 years. <laughs> of all the cheap tricks, I... Oh, 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 here he is. Oh, come here. Oh, come here. Come here. Come Hello, folks. Hello. 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 Oh, you're certainly a welcome sight, Mr. Wimple. We've all been impatient for you to get here. Yeah, you have some trouble ducking out, kid? Well, yes, a little. Mm -hmm. You see, Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife. Yes, we know, Wallace. Well, Sweetie Face was in a terrible twit. She usually has a very even temper, even worse than you would expect. <laughs> but tonight, oh, goodness. Well, uh, what threw her into such a tizzy, Wally? Something that happened downtown, Mr. Wilcox. She... Uh, Oh, bubble gum. May I have a piece? Huh? Oh, sure, Wimp. Hey, Molly, pass the horse duvers to Wimp. <laughs> Help yourself, Wimp. There's bubble gum, licorice drops, juicy fruit, chewing gum, cigars, and sen sen. Horse duvers, he says. He's so continental. Go on, Mr. Wimble. What happened? You mean about Sweetie Face? Yeah. 
Well, she was downtown giving her regular Tuesday afternoon judo lessons to the police force. <laughs> she was showing Sergeant Wilkowski how to take a loaded pistol away from a bandit. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And the pistol went off, mm -hmm. went through the door to the squad room, hit a tear gas gun, filled the room with tear gas, and Sweetie Face tripped over a pair of handcuffs, got herself locked to the radiator, lost her temper, tore the radi out, radiator out by the roots, and threw it out the window, <laughs> forgetting that she was still fastened to it, and landed in the alley on a garbage truck. <laughs> I guess it was quite an afternoon. <laughs> Well, I can certainly see why Sweetie Face was a trifle annoyed. But hey, Wally, how about the fish? Did you bring them, Mr. Wimple? Oh, yes, indeed. I left them out on the porch. Have you got something to put them in? I'll say she has, Wallace. A great big frying pan. Oh, that won't do, Doctor. It isn't deep enough. Oh, sure it is, Wimp. Besides, we don't have to fry them all at once. Fry them? Huh? Oh, Mr. McGee, how terrible you're... You're joking, aren't you? Joking? About what, Mr. Wimple? About frying my sweet little guppies. Guppies? <laughs> Why, yes, guppies. I asked Mr. McGee if he liked fish, and he said he loved them, and since my guppies had their puppies... <laughs> is something wrong? Yes, something's wrong, but we know who it is. Let go of me. Get away now. Come here. Pepper and Molly return in a moment. Whenever you want your house to look especially attractive, remember this. Few things add to the attractiveness of any home or to the prestige of any homemaker, like the gleaming brightness of well-waxed floors. Remember, too, that the wax to use is Johnson's Paste Wax. Three generations of homemakers have discovered that no other wax brings such lustrous beauty to wood floors in exactly the same way. That's Johnson's Paste Wax at your dealers. And now there's an easy way to polish your floors with Johnson's Paste Wax. Ask your dealer about Johnson's new Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. It's wonderful to use. The big whirling brush does all the work of polishing while you merely walk along and guide. You can buy a Beauty Floor Electric Polisher from your Johnson dealer or rent one at low cost if you prefer. Ah, that was wonderful. May I have another cup of coffee, Molly? Certainly, Doctor. Mr. Wilcox? No, thanks. I've had three cups already. Ah, uh, that apple pie was a masterpiece, Molly. Thank you. It seems strange, but apple pie always finishes off a fish dinner for me. Another piece of pie, McGee? No, thanks. But if anybody wants some more sardines, I'll be glad to open another can. <laughs> oh, well, good night. Good night, all. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday, won't you? Cleaning and polishing furniture can take hours of tedious work, but not if you use Johnson's Cream Wax, the fastest wax furniture polish money can buy. For Johnson's Cream Wax cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly, that using it is almost as easy as dusting. A few strokes with a cloth do the cleaning. A few more bring out a bright, satin-smooth polish. And Johnson's Cream Wax contains no sticky oil to catch dust. Tomorrow, start using Johnson's Cream Wax. It's the fastest wax furniture polish money can buy. You're tuned for the stars on NBC.